Okay, we haven't done a video down here at the print farm in a little while. And it's Saturday evening and everything is finished printing and things are really quiet in here so I figured this would be a good opportunity to do a video. Some of my printers run pretty quiet but some of them are pretty noisy but all in all when everything's running we have the ventilation going it's pretty noisy and not too suitable for doing a video where I'm talking but I'm going to just uh, kind of show you around a little bit and we're basically wanting to show you where we're at now compared to where we were at five months ago when we did our first test print on some of these ANET printers over here. We have now added some more printers here and then in the other room we have some along with our resin printers over there. But just thought I'd walk you through and show you where we're at. The previous videos that a lot of you watched as we were when I started from scratch and where I'm at now, it's I feel, <laughs> I feel like I've paid my dues. But anyway, to just fill you in, we still have, I've got about six more A-nets here, some A-8s and some AT4 printers to assemble. Here's our power box that went through a couple of videos showing it. And there are my two little sensors that you can see that are showing us that the surge protectors are still functioning properly. Uh, let's see, of course, the ANET printers, uh, the top row here, basically all ANET ET4 printers. This row, ET4X printers. This particular one here is going under some repairs. I'm having to do some work on the print head with it. And I'm also uh, working on the one, the Pro here. And I'm in the process of changing this one to a larger nozzle. I'm going to go to a 0.8, doubling the size of the, the nozzle and do some prints and tests with it, see if we can start getting our speed increased by increasing the nozzle size. Well, I said we'd finish printing, but I do have two jobs. Two of my, all of these printers on this wall are glass fed except for these two. And these are not glass fed. They're printing on the uh, textured bed. But I had a couple jobs that I wanted to run. I needed to print a couple of these parts. We'd made a, some slight modifications to them and I want to print them see how they work. They'll run all day tomorrow, so I'll uh, check on them Monday when we start up these other printers. And what we're doing here is printing PETG again. These are bases for the NTI Helping Hand Tabletop Portable. So this is that round black piece, and what we're doing is printing some modified versions of it and we're going to test them. We're constantly trying to improve these products. Printing them and testing them and going back and modifying more, that's all part of the game. We won't be running the other printers again until Monday and Tuesday. We'll be starting them back up. That gives me a little break at least at the end of the week. As you can see, we've been printing lap diners those have all finished printing and we'll be taking those off. We've been trying to uh, get an accumulation of lap diners. And down here, of course, this little section is where I keep my, keep my glue and water for um, the um, print surfaces, the glass beds when I need to add that adhesion to them. And my little refrigerator here my diet cokes you always have to have a beverage cooler and of course we have some 
hairspray. In some cases, we'll use these cans of hairspray, but as I've said in previous videos, I don't like to use hairspray because it messes everything up too much. Oh, okay, over here, we've got a little bit of filament here. The bulk filament is out in the warehouse area. And then this is my oven that I was going to modify for reconditioning or drying out spools of filament. And I haven't had time to work on that project. And this microwave is what we use to take these used packs of silica gel. As you can see, these are all dark. And basically what you do is just put them in here. And I'm just going to go ahead and run this thing. For about a minute and show you but what it will do they'll they'll turn orange when they when the moisture is pulled out of them and then right here my empty spools this is my filament counter I'm still using the manual one because I haven't had time to build and design the motorized version yet and of course, the monitor up here for our our cameras in here. We have the, both the fixed cameras. And then we have these two tripod cameras that I can move to any location and get a close-up view of a particular printer when it's printing in case there's a, a problem there and something that I want to keep track of and let's see what else we've got of course we've got some of the Chronix CXY2 Pros here some more ANETs up here some more Tronixes some of the older printers but that's about it this is my little work area here this is where I work on the printers like I said I'm doing some changes to the nozzles and everything on this one I'm going to upsize it I've got a couple parts here I kind of check the parts out there's my white grease I don't know if you remember or not, but that's what I use to um, lubricate the uh, printers, especially the uh, screw drives and so forth, and also the slides on them. I think the lubrication helps them run a little bit smoother, a little bit quiet, quieter, and uh, it will extend the life. I've had some comments where people say, well, you don't want to put grease on there because it will collect dust or something, but I've got a pretty dust-free environment here. So, and I think normally you would want these printers to print in a dust-free environment. So, that's about it. I just wanted to show you a little bit about where we're at here. I've got a computer down here where I can pull up the parts and make changes to them if necessary. But it's a definitely a whole lot different looking at it like this than it was back in those videos when I first came out here and had the vision of turning this in to a print farm. So I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, when you're 3D printing, be sure to keep a lot of fire extinguishers around. I've got several of them in this room and in the other room. I've never had a situation where there's been any 
kind of a even a hint of a fire or scorching or anything. So knock on wood, but always be prepared. So until the next time, happy printing from New Tech Inventors.